G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, it's Sunday here in Australia, so Saturday over in the States. The weekend's obviously, you know, not a lot generally sort of happens on a weekend. The market is still travelling kind of sideways. We can see here, look, it's been doing it for a little while. And in some areas, it's been travelling down, like Cardano. Had this massive pump, you know, it was up nearly a dollar thirty, and there we go, it was pulled back to a dollar fourteen. I wouldn't be surprised if this pulls back down sort of closer to a dollar. Um, possible that it could go under a dollar, I doubt it though, but I do think it'll probably come down under the one dollar ten mark. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Everyone's kind of waiting on bated breath at the moment. What's going to happen with the markets? Is this you know, again, a bit of a fake out and we roll over and go lower or are we finally ready to break this downtrend and get back into the, you know, the proper kind of bull market that people are used to. All right, let's have a look. So 1.5 trillion, we're starting to get close to that $1.6 trillion. So again, the market is sort of moving up in some areas, but in other areas, sort of not so much. So BTC dominance has dropped. So there you go, ETH dominance is rising, so people are probably a little bit happy about this uh, EIP1559 uh, news that's come out, and maybe they're starting to get back into ETH. We'll have to wait and see. It's not really showing on the charts all that much, but I suppose a little bit, up 12% uh, in the last seven days. We can see there, but really, if you run a line kind of through the middle, it's, it's not jumping too much at the moment. And again, you know, is there gonna be a bigger weekend correction? We're always waiting to see. There has sort of been uh, in some areas and then other areas, not really. So again, gas prices, all right, 127, they are what they are. We're not gonna focus on those too much. All right, what has really moved in the last 24 hours in the top 100 at least? All right, Ocean Protocol's done pretty well. Uh, Chili's absolutely flying and you know, there's a lot of hype around uh, NFTs to do with sports. Uh, teams and things like that and Chili's they are really getting into that whole sports side of you know providing to tokens for fans to support their clubs and things so I would say that's probably why it's got a lot to do with that and also the news that we had that they are moving into the American market Bancor doing well OMG Uniswap so some nice sort of green here VeChain and look Ethereum itself so some of these gains are pretty good uh, particularly this one, uh, quite good for Ocean Protocol uh, and Chili's and Bancor. Really, the rest of them, they're just, you know, what we come to sort of expect in a bull market, you know. 10% over tw uh, over 24 hours, eh, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Any normal person who had a stock that moved by 10% in 24 hours would absolutely be stoked and cheering. So, yeah, that's the difference between the two spaces. But again, we have these great gains, once the bear market comes, you're going to have these kind of losses and even worse. So you just need to be prepared for that. All right, speaking of losses though, what hasn't fared so well in the last 24 hours in the top 100? All right, ZK Swap having a bit of a, bit of a pullback. Luna, IOST, Stacks. But look, these are all pretty small losses. And again, even if you've lost 10%, if you're still up basically 30% for seven days, you're probably not too worried about it. Yes, you'd be a little bit, you know, down that you'd lost 10%. And if you bought at the top, then yes, you're probably starting to hurt a little bit. But again, if you've been in the project for a while, uh, and again, yeah, it's already pumped a lot. Losing 10% isn't the end of the world. But there's one double-digit loser, or not loser, that's probably not, not a nice way to say, but there's one double-digit loss in the last 24 hours in the top 100, and then everything is basically single-digit losses and fairly small ones. We've got one that's kind of over 5%, uh, and then everything else is under, yeah, 5%. So not too bad. And again, look, even Engine Coin, we knew this was coming. It pumped by 100% in seven days, so of course there's going to be a retracement. But there's still a lot of hype around... NFTs and that, so I do think Engine will likely continue to go higher. Polygon Matic, uh, same sort of thing. It pumped so hard that, of course, it was going to have a retracement. So that's what we're seeing at the moment. And this could continue to go lower, but how much lower, I don't know. Again, it, we're all we're really, really, <laughs> we're all really waiting to see exactly what Bitcoin's going to do. If it gets on a move and starts to pump, there's going to be a little bit of a bleed off in the altcoins because people will just simply take some profit and try and chase the bitcoin pump 
but overall it will drag up the rest of the markets but if bitcoin continues to you know if it really does start to go down i should say then you'll really see these altcoins bleed out again people just panic sell uh and then you know will be going into cash hoping that they can find and catch the bottom for me i like to try and front run the trend so again i, I believe we're going to sort of range sideways and bitcoin may come down and again we may see a forty-two thousand, forty-three thousand dollar bitcoin an actual close down there and maybe a wick into the uh, high 30s but so far that hasn't played out and so yeah never financial advice that I provide because look that's just my guess and that's what it is what I like to think is an educated guess though all right so let's move on now a project that I've really liked and has performed unbelievably for me is the secret network I uh, the you know this is a fork sort of of the enigma project um, and, and I yeah I really love it and I was lucky enough I think I got into this at about the cheapest I got it was eight cents or 12 cents or something like that when it was the Enigma token I uh, converted it over so 12 cents to two dollars 95 or eight cents possibly uh, I don't have it in front of me I know it was cheap it was somewhere around kind of that 10 cent mark absolutely flying now what I like the most so there you go 30 days uh, up 144 percent let's go here to one year Look at this, made it all the way up to $4.60, basically $4.65, and it found, looks like it has found the bottom, and it's kind of just bouncing around here at the moment. So the $3 mark. So this is looking like a pretty good entry point at the moment, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. Because again, it looks like it found the bottom, had its rebound, and it's come back, and it's sort of retesting these levels. And it's pretty close to this, because this could still be sort of the bottom somewhere around about here two dollars sixty one so it might drop a little bit but for me this is looking like a pretty good entry point and I did buy some more I was lucky enough that I sold close to the top not quite uh, the top I think it was about four dollars twenty ish four dollars fifteen I sold some SRT so I made all my money back and some and then I've reinvested uh, some of that money uh, and again, I bought it a little bit uh, cheaper than, I think a little bit more expensive actually than where it was. But currently, I do expect this to bounce. So if you're into Secret Network, go and have a look. Let's see what it says down here. No, it's not going to come up. But Secret, Secret Network, again, it's basically a fork of the Enigma token uh, from back in 2017. They had some issues with the SEC. Uh, they got that sorted out, paid the fine, and now Secret Network uh, is the token that most people have converted into. All right, Bitcoin, let's have a look at the chart. So as I said, this could be a bit of a dead cat bounce. It was here, it rolled over. People thought, bounce, right, this is it. No, it's rolled over again. Now it's started to come back up and rolled over. And now it's, it's just a lot of indecision. You can see it right here. This is an indecisive market. And what we find a lot of the time is when there's indecision, it generally rolls over to the downside. But not always. We need to remember we are in a bull market, or at least you know I believe we are, and I'm guessing you probably do as well. So indecision can still lead to enthusiasm. People go, no, nah, I believe the bottom's in, that maybe that was it. And so now it just starts to go on a run. But that's it. We just don't know at the moment. We'll have to wait and see. As I said, for me, I'm not really buying any Ethereum or Bitcoin at the moment because I'm just waiting to see what happens. I'm more dollar cost averaging into some of my altcoins like i said secret network was one uh what else did i get into i bought some more oh god synthetics a little while ago which i spoke about and Aave. i do believe they're cooling off at the moment but they're just gearing up for the next leg again in my personal opinion you need to make your own decisions and do your own research to find out all right moving on here we go personal finance expert susie orman says i love bitcoin and advises how to buy Bitcoin and praises PayPal. So this is where it starts. You know, big names in finance and things like that start to get into it and tweet about it. Elon Musk, Michael Saylor, so on and so on. Um, you know, Goldman Sachs, all these kind of big companies start to get into it. And once they're talking about it, they've already been in it for a while generally. They've built their positions. And I'm not saying uh, Susie Orman in particular, but, you know, a lot of people will fud it 
hoping hoping that the price goes down, build their position, and then once they've built their position, then they'll start to praise it. And again, I'm not saying that's what Susie Orman done. I'm just saying she's saying she loves it. That's because she's likely been in it for a while and she's made some pretty good gains. So you need to remember those kind of things. People aren't going to start to say how great it is before they get in because if they're, you know, kind of big in the space, especially financial and anything to do with money, then those, uh, you know, when they do articles like this and put out tweets, it's likely to push up the price. So they want to have bought it first. All right. Basketball billionaires from NBA blockchain use case committee. Sorry, M- basket billionaires form NJ blockchain use case committee. So according to a report from Sportico yesterday, a group of some of the wealthiest and most powerful National Basketball Association team owners are forming a committee to investigate blockchain use cases for the NBA, NFTs as one. Called the Blockchain Advisory Subcommittee, members include Mark Cuban, Joe Tsai, Ted Leonis, Steve Pagliuca, hopefully I said that right, Vivek, Rand V, I'm going to butcher these names, and Ryan Sweeney. According to Sportico, the goal of the subcommittee is to explore ways to integrate blockchain across the league's businesses. They're already doing this, and again, NFTs is, you know, is going to be massive, and it's going to be the new basketball trader cards. You won't actually have the physical cards so much into the future. I'm not saying they won't make any, but it just won't be as big. It's all going to be digital, uh, and that's exactly where I see this going. I think the prices at the moment will likely, will possibly, I'll say, not likely, will possibly be a little bit too high just because there's a little bit of hype. Uh, in the bear market might be a good time to try and come back and find some of these. But with art, art, you know, it doesn't go through the kind of bear markets that, you know, we think of in traditional finance. They do have times where art is very popular and then it's not as popular, but the fluctuations in art itself, I don't think will be as dramatic as the fluctuations in crypto, at least for the moment. I do believe crypto is getting to a spot where it will level out and the, the, the price hikes won't be so big and the price dumps won't be so big as well. And so some of these will be absolutely collectible. You know, something like having, you know, Michael Jordan's rookie card or something like that. It'll just be in the digital form. All right, DeFi will bring a golden age for the film industry. This is something I'm really looking into. Once I read this, I was like, this is something I will definitely keep my eye out for uh, and consider investing in. So, with an explosion of video streaming as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and now around 40 billion locked in decentralized finance protocols, it's time for decentralized finance uh, and the film industry to meet. Film financing is a cumbersome and in an inefficient system. Investors are the first to put their money in, but the last to see any return. There is no transparency into how funds are being used during production or how profits are allocated after distribution. DeFi and blockchain technology can address many of these problems by forming a new realm of decentralized finance filming or DeFi-Fi. This, I love this idea. I've always thought, God, how good would it be to invest uh, in some movies? Because movies do quite well, if if it's a good movie at least, you know, and they get the actors for the right price and all the rest of it. I mean, they make, you know, millions and sometimes even get into the billions of dollars. So, yeah, this is something I'll be looking into. Love to know your thoughts down below. Let me know. Are you excited about DeFi-Fi? I am. That's weird saying that. (laughs) All right, the long arm of the law won't let the scoundrels get away. So, the co-founder of a fraudulent ICO backed by Floyd Mayweather and DJ Khaled will spend eight years in prison for misleading and stealing 25 million from investors. Love it, love it, love it. There were so many ICOs that came out back in 2017 and 2018 and they were legit just scams. There was nothing behind them whatsoever. Uh, and they yeah, fleece people of millions of dollars. So glad to hear this is happening. Now, unfortunately, I do think a number of the projects that are coming out now probably don't have a lot behind it. I'm not going to come out and say they're an absolute scam, but I just think they're here for the money because that's what happened in 2017. There was just ICO after ICO after ICO and half of them did nothing. They were just legitimately a money grab and they didn't really have anything behind it. And the long arm of the law has caught up with them. So I am glad in this sense, you know, 
I guess what we have to wonder is, you know, how much knowledge did Floyd and DJ Khaled uh, have of this? I'm not saying they had any knowledge whatsoever, but this is why celebrities need to be careful when they go and promote things. You know, Ian McAfee, he's obviously having trouble at the moment. Oh, God, what's his name? Steven Seagal was uh, part of, I think, at least one anyway in Spreakingham, and they were just shams. And this doesn't do their profiles any good when they get caught up in this kind of stuff so again i'm not saying floyd mayweather or dj Clad had any knowledge of this but it doesn't help that you know they back these kind of things and then people lost their money it's definitely not good for their image all right a story that i'm really stoked about and i brought this uh to everyone's attention a little while ago so india's bitcoin exchanges breathe sigh of relief as government reconsiders crypto ban i really do think they need to and they really don't have a choice anyway they couldn't ban it if the rest of the world's adopting it as the indian indian finance minister tones down the government's previous position that fueled fears of a total crypto ban india's crypto industry welcomed the remarks as a sign that a regulated regulatory framework excuse me is in the making and this is what they need yeah they need to have regulation and protect people but don't ban it the re number one the rest of the world is getting on board it's not going away so by you saying we're not going to use it you get left behind but there is an opportunity there for people and particularly i'm thinking more about the really impoverished to possibly make some really good money and help get themselves out of the position they are now there's equally as much uh, proposition that they could lose money by investing in the wrong thing but i think long term if they were to you know buy some bitcoin and simply hold it they're probably going to be better off but again then they still need to either sell it or at least be able to understand how to put it to work again you know earning some interest and things like that you know block and whatever you don't have to use block there's other places out there that you can do similar but i like block and i've spoke about that so India's finance minister said the government encourages a window of experiment for crypto. Love it. Indian crypto industry uh, representatives told Decrypt it could mean that a total ban is off the table. I think it is, 100%. India's gone back and had a look at it and gone, hang on, everywhere else is getting into this stuff. They are going to regulate it. If we simply say, no, we're not using it, we'll get left behind. And there's money to be made in crypto. They're going to tax it. Uh, you know it's just another stream of income for governments and big banks and all the rest of it so yeah i don't think any bans are coming you know crap cryptos that are just rug pulls and scams and all the rest of it absolutely they will eventually get banned and you know the owners will get caught and they'll spend time in jail if anyone's doing that but the good ones ones that legitimately have communities behind them they've been around for a while you know bitcoin and ethereum again not financial advice just my personal opinion things like that i think they really are here long term and they're for the good of everybody not just kind of the few don't get me wrong there's people who got in nice and early and are doing way better than others but eventually you know they will start to sell off some of their crypto and it will find it into its way into the hands of other people you know you hear these stories that some people are never going to sell well if you're never going to sell what good has it done you then you've got all this money you know what do you then do with it all you know we won't no i suppose we can still call it money just not the fiat system but you know what's the point in being rich like filthy mega rich but you never spend a dime what good is it to you then you know other than you're going to be one of those people who are like a collector and go i've got all of this stuff okay that's awesome but then what there's got to be more of the life than just simply stacking sats or you know having all this money in the world but they're never spending a cent they will spend it so even these whales will eventually uh, sell their bitcoin everyone has their price and eventually it will get more distributed but at the moment people are definitely making positions and it's the same for me i'm not sure if i'm going to sell any more bitcoin i already sold uh, 10 percent of all my bitcoin got some of my money back not all of it but i've made more money in other areas so for here i mean i guess there's going to be a price where i will sell some everyone has a sell price everyone has a price where they go yep i'm gonna sell i don't know what it is but look if bitcoin got to half a million dollars i'll probably start to sell some bitcoin i think well not bitcoin i don't have enough to be selling bitcoins but sell some of my bitcoin you know you know maybe another 10 percent or 20 percent of whatever i've got if it gets to half a million in all fairness probably if it gets to even less if i see bitcoin around 200 300 000, i'll probably be selling some more in all fairness all right moving on jp morgan 
So he sends its private clients a primer on crypto. So JP Morgan has sent a report to its private banking clients to educate them on the risks and opportunities of investing in crypto. The report, which was produced on Friday, oh, sorry, in February 2021 and obtained by Coindesk on Friday, has been distributed to clients of JP Morgan Private Bank, which requires a, mil- a minimum balance of $10 million to open an account. Uh, this comes after CNBC reported in February that JP Morgan co president Daniel Pinto claimed demand isn't there yet uh, from clients for crypto services, but it, but it will be there at some point. Well, it sounds like it kind of is there because they're sending out reports to people uh, and to people who have to invest a million of ten dollars to invest with them. So, yeah, I'd say the demand is there. All right, last but not least. So obviously people are getting really worried. You know, Bitcoin hasn't been performing all that well. It's kind of been on a bit of a downtrend. It is fluctuating up and down. And obviously Tesla went out and bought a whole stack of Bitcoin and MicroStrategy did the same. And now that Bitcoin isn't performing well, the stocks of these companies uh, have taken a pretty dramatic turn because people are now panicking that their money's going to be lost. So they're selling these stocks. In all fairness, I think, you know, this could be a good point if you want to buy into these stocks now. Because my personal opinion is they're not going to sell Bitcoin at the moment. They're confident that it's going to go up in the long term and they haven't put everything into it. It's not like MicroStrategy dumped all their money into Bitcoin. They've definitely put a large amount of it in there, but not all of it. They've still got more money. And the same with Tesla. I think Tesla put in $1.5 billion into Bitcoin. It was like 5% of their total cash sort of position and all the rest of it the 1.5 you know the five percent sorry of their total net worth isn't going to send that company broke they could handle bitcoin going down to thirty thousand. would it hurt their bottom line yes but in the long run five ten twenty years thirty years from now they will have made unbelievable wealth from that and i'm sure they've done their research and aren't panicking but new people to the space they are so let's read on Tesla is now coming under pressure to sell off the 1.5 billion it holds in Bitcoin. Since the electric vehicle announce, uh, maker announced its crypto buy, a buy-in, Tesla shares have fallen by a stomach churning 30%. So again, people are now panicking. I'm sure Tesla won't. <coughs> and the smart investors shouldn't either, but this could be a great buying opportunity. Gary Black, the former CEO of Aegon Asset Management tweeted that Tesla would generate positive momentum if it bows out of crypto, adding, highly unlikely, but shareholders would be very supportive. I think shareholders who understand and are sticking tough, or maybe even buying more on the dip, you know, they're going to be much better off in years to come. Uh, Again, I can see the price coming down for Microsoft and sorry, not Microsoft, MicroStrategy and Tesla and until Bitcoin starts to really pump up again. And one Bit, once Bitcoin gets on its next run, watch everyone try to pile back into MicroStrategy and pile back into Tesla. And they'll be kicking themselves. They'll likely be buying back in at a higher price. So Bitcoin's correction has also been hurting MicroStrategy. The business intelligence firm that owns more than 91,000 Bitcoin, its share price has tumbled by over 50%. Uh, in less than a month. The company doesn't seem too worried though. MicroStrategy bought another 205 Bitcoin this week in a $10 million spending spree that coincided with the latest dip. So, you know, is the smart money getting out of these stocks and selling their Bitcoin or is the smart money simply holding and maybe buying these dips? I don't know. Time will tell. For me, I'm not really into stocks but I am starting to think this might be the time where I should be buying some stocks into micro strategy uh, and into Tesla because it's down 30%. Something I'll have to look into. Love to know your thoughts down below. Uh, Number one, are you into stocks? And do you think this is a good time to be buying these stocks? Or are you one of the people that have sold out and been like, nah, Bitcoin's going lower and it's gonna get worse and these stocks are obviously gonna go worse. I'm thinking of buying in, so you obviously know my stance, but I'd love to know yours down below. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train, congratulations and well done, and I'll see you next time.